Turn a right. Turn a left. 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 Flatter. The feeling of skiing is very unique. Just the way you're turning and the way you're leaning and the way your ski feels like it's carving on the snow. It's just really rhythmic, really fluid, a really beautiful motion that once you feel that, like you get it and you love it and you want to get that feeling again. But for a blind person, it does, it takes some work to get there. We are on top of the world, the apex of the planet. I can't believe it. Center of the cosmos. You I did it, man. It so many people doubted you, you showed them. So many people. When I first started skiing about 10 years ago, there were a lot of totally blind skiers. And then it seemed like blind skiing kind of dropped off. Now, when you go to a resort, it's a very rare occasion when you see a blind person skiing. Well, it's hard to do, we're going up a little hill. I want to see more blind skiers on the slopes. I want to figure out how to get more blind people out there skiing and enjoying it as a recreational sport. When I was learning to ski, I was at an adaptive ski program, and I was talking to this instructor, and I told him what my goals were with skiing, that I wanted to ski beautifully, fluidly. And he said to me, blind people will always ski like blind people. It irked me because I thought, well, is the problem with the blind person, or is the problem with low expectations, or with the way that the techniques are being taught? And it fueled me to want to ski better. For a blind person, when you learn to ski, you really go through a process where you learn to communicate with another person and create this really wonderful relationship of trust. When I first started skiing, I got bounced around a little bit. I had different instructors, different guides, and you know, like I had one guide who said, you just ski, I'll tell you if you're getting near a tree. I didn't like that. <laughs> where are we? Um, you're on the top of my skis, that's where you're at. And I'm on top of your skis. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Jeff and I met about 10 years ago at this ski festival for blind right. people. Okay. I just moved to Colorado and I was looking to learn how to ski. I showed up and Jeff befriended me pretty quickly and jumped right in and started guiding me. And we never stopped skiing together for the last 10 years. Just meander kind of through these people here. There we go. Well, first me here. Back to the right to check your speed, and here we go. We're gonna start to ski to the left. Turn a left. Jeff's technique for guiding me is revolutionary. He skis generally in front of me, and he yells out directions, obviously precise directions. Uh, he'll break turns into three syllables. Usually it's turn a left, turn a right. And what's neat about that is that I know with each syllable uh, where I should be in the turn. Because as Jeff explained, as an instructor, you teach three parts of a turn. The beginning, the middle, and the end. The initiation, the beginning, and the finish. And so if a guide can call out directions in that three-syllable technique, it really helps a blind person to understand the shape of a good turn. Turn a left, turn a right. Jeff is extending his voice, so it wasn't turn a left, it was turn a left because it was flatter terrain, so we wanted to make bigger turns. Turn a left, steeper. Turn a right. Turn a left. Turn a right. Turn a left. 
turning right. Well, so many guides give the skier way too much information. They throw in extra words. And just by keeping it kind of simple, the guide and the skier can get into a nice rhythm and just focus on the skiing at hand instead of all those other distractions. Awesome. In only eight simple Going words, Jeff tells right me everything here. I need to know on the slope. With each syllable, there's no guesswork. I know exactly where to be. As an instructor, I wanted to expand my horizons and did a lot of different adaptive clinics, but the one that really intrigued me was skiing and guiding blind and visually impaired skiers. That challenges my mind. And all of ski teaching and just even free skiing or snowboarding in general, you know, everybody should be focusing down the hill to look for different objects, people that they need to go around. And by the guide in front, now the blind skier is focusing down the hill. I find when a guide is behind me, a lot of times I'm turning backwards to listen to their commands, and that puts me at a bad ski position. Turn a right hand Jeff and I have been doing these guiding clinics around the country at different resorts including Sun Valley. We really wanted to influence not only the professionals that are at the adaptive programs that teach blind skiing, but also the instructors and the volunteers. We think it's key to hit the guides, to think about the techniques that are gonna help that blind person progress as best they can. Because it, that enthusiasm, it may start with an instructor who sees a blind person thinking about skiing and saying, hey, you know, come on out here, try it out. Well, I'll introduce uh, my friend Jeff. There are a lot of great programs for blind skiing. Each of these groups have really wonderful camps and programs to get a blind person started. Sometimes we'll be skiing and I'll hear him say, turn a left. And I know that that's just getting me to traverse across the slope or getting around the person. I always tell him, don't tell me what the obstacle is. Just get me around it. I'm on a need to know basis. <laughs> Eric's talk really helped, just it kind of motivated me to get into the mind frame for today. A real quick question. Yes. Uh, with pole planting, do you ever really use that? I was, I was wondering if it might be used as a good tool to prepare you for the turn. I think the pole plant was, the, for me, the biggest breakthrough in turning. Yeah. And how to figure out how to start the turn. Just follow my voice, we're going to head straight down. It's good to get the instructors to guide me, because it helps get them ready to guide a beginning blind skier. If the instructor or the guide isn't feeling natural, then how can the student feel exactly. natural? <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's what, what's important about having, you know, the commands that you can draw out like that, to yeah. change the turn shape and that, to keep that nat the fluidity going. Turn a left and stop. All right. So tomorrow with the vets, then it might be more challenging um, but, I mean, basically the same things apply, but it just probably will take maybe a little longer to get into that whole rhythm. A lot of the blind people out skiing traditionally have been blind folks who have gone blind in accidents or blind congenitally from birth. But now in the last few years, there's a concentration of vets from Iraq and Afghanistan and the various wars coming back. And these guys are young and they're fit and they're looking for ways of excelling. Good, I got you. Okay. It's, the, it's the positioning. Uh, from the back. This is the most fun I've had in a year. And, and I haven't even got on the hill yet. <laughs> I was wounded in Iraq uh, in uh, September 2nd of 06 uh, in, in southwest of Baghdad. That's good? Yeah. Okay, good. My name's Travis Fugit. I became visually impaired serving overseas in 2005. I was hit by an IED. That's how I lost my vision. And from that, it took a long time to recover, but now I'm skiing. It's pretty awesome. We have a lot of new technologies, a lot of accessibility gear, but still we're, we are limited and we realize that. And, it can be, it can be a heavy weight. So, 
finding the motivation to live that way is, is definitely key. I got to hear Eric give us a motivational speech. It was really inspiring, all the things that he's done. It really motivates me to want to do more with myself. You did it, man. Woo! Yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah. All this good equipment. It's going to be awesome. Okay. You know, um, I just like that. typically I just like right. grab them at cool. this point. I feel like she just came over and took me and started hanging yeah. out. He said, let's go skiing. He yeah. said, all right, yeah. let's do it. I won't lie. We're actually uh, getting used to the equipment as well. That's kind of key with anything. It's, it's interesting. Important to just stand here and play around a little bit. Let's continue doing some walking, huh? And you let me know when you feel like you're ready for the next step, when you feel comfortable. I really want to work on it and, and be able to come down at fluid by the time I leave. I'm going to try hard. You're essentially part of a... Okay, so sidestepping up the hill, all this is is one foot chasing the other. Okay. You want to make sure that you keep both skis right. straight ahead. Okay, nice hips width apart. You it sort of makes it sound a little platform there. Exactly, and you can Neat. feel that edge digging into the hill. Yeah. And you can hear it if you bring the uphill ski up. You can hear it dig in. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Sometimes Jeff doesn't call turns at all. He just lets me ski on my own. And I love that because it helps me create my own rhythm. Looking good there, Eric. If I drift too far over to the left or right, you'll just oh, yeah. be there behind me, call. Yep, and, me I'll, and I'll get you right back in where we need to be. Keep, cool. you, keep you safe. A little bit to your right. Now left. And stop. Well, how long have you been skiing? Uh, maybe 10 years. Yeah, about 10 years. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah, that's impressive. That's really Lots cool. of impressive things. That's one of them right there. <laughs> All right, something. Here comes the chair. And down. Here comes the chair. Sorry. Yep, it's OK. <laughs> cool. The bumps just make it a little bit harder because it's kind of hard to predict. And when you can't see them, you know, just trying to make your same turn shape, you can kind of hit the bumps in the wrong position and really throw you off. In the on the edge, and drop. Good. <laughs> uh, and stop, yeah. You can still, in bumps, get, just get completely hammered every now and then, you know? So. It's just part of the, part of the, I guess, fun. <laughs> I really did hit something there. I think in a blind person's daily life, they just, they don't get speed. And that's what, what I think the most exciting part of skiing is when you're blind, is that you're really moving fast. You're reacting so quickly. Normally in your life, you have time to react to things. But in skiing, when you're blind, you're reacting to, to what you're feeling under your feet. So you're literally reacting instantaneously. It's very exciting or terrifying, depending on how you look at life. It's a great sport. So I'm having a blast. I'm having a great time. Yeah! I'm going to keep facing you like this. We're going to head down the hill. Just follow my voice. And we're going to stay in that gliding wedge for now. OK. OK? Good, Good. Go ahead and spread them open a little wider right now. Wider, wider, wider. Perfect. Yeah! Ow! That's awesome. Yeah, now you're going to feel we're towards the bottom. So really spread your heels apart and come to a stop. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that awesome. That's great. Let's do it again. Did you right. feel like more, you're more, totally more. in a different world there? Yeah. Yeah. Was that great. your first ever ski run? My first ever run. I didn't fall. <laughs> it was awesome. It is awesome, dude. Yeah. And he went pretty fast, too. 
Working with Travis today is, I think, an uplifting feeling both ways. Just his spirit alone and his enthusiasm to get out there is just unbelievable courage. Gliding along, you can feel the slope. Great, that's it, Travis. Bigger wedge, slowing yourself down. Perfect, and stop. Great. It's very tough for a blind person to afford a season pass, even with the special rate that the resorts give. Over 70% of blind people, working age blind people, are unemployed. They're just thinking about getting through the day and surviving economically. I hope that you to become a good blind skier, it takes an investment. You have to have a good guide who you really trust, and you have to build that relationship. Yeah, that you will go home. Have high expectations to not say, oh, you know, a blind person can only ski this well, but to have really high expectations to say, you know, they can ski great. Oh, is it getting big? I think every blind person should feel comfortable with their body. Being physical is, it's connected to your confidence and that's connected to how much you're able to get and squeeze out of your life. Yeah. It's really less about obstacles than it is about your own determination to live the most actively, the most fully you can in your life, to do the things that you expect out of yourself, to do the things that maybe you, you can't imagine yourself doing, but the things that you were meant to do. So it is a difficult sport, but once you get it, it's worth it. Turn it right. Turn it right. Getting old, but as he dances with his children, he knows.